Hi, this is Paula from CHE. Today we talk about COVID-19 vaccines with Dr. Michelle Chasson from Sherikam Sacred Heart Hospital. Nova Scotia started vaccinating last week. And according to government plans, frontline healthcare workers and long-term care staff in the central zone will receive their vaccine by the end of the month. Here in the Eastern Zone, the Cape Breton Regional Hospital will be set up as a storage unit for vaccines and will be receiving 1,950 doses the first week of January. Details about the immunization clinics are still being worked out. Dr. Chasson tells us more about the vaccines, including how they work and what to expect. Here's our conversation. First, I wanted to start with the new strain that started in the UK. What could you tell me about it? Yeah, well, thank you very much for asking me to answer some questions. Um, it seems like it's been a long time since we last spoke, eh? A lot, a lot has happened. Um, the, uh, the new strain, this is a very new development. It's not uncommon. That's what viruses do. Viruses will change. They will mutate. Um, and so there is a new strain that is now becoming the predominant strain. So it's, it's, very, it's the same virus, but it's changed a little bit. So it's like seeing instead of having a red car, it's the exact same car, but now blue on the outside. So so for the most part, my understanding is, is that this virus uh, has mutated a little bit, but it is very similar. But the changes that it's made has allowed it to maybe be transferred from one person to another uh, more easily. So that's concerning. However, it doesn't seem like it is more deadly. It doesn't seem like it's uh, more harmful to the host. So it's acting the same way, but maybe it's, it's being transmitted a bit more easily, which is of concern as it can then possibly spread through the population more. Having said that, this is very new. So uh, doctors in the United Kingdom don't know very much information about this new strain, let alone doctors in other places in the world. Will the vaccine uh, protect you against that new strain? Very good question. A question that, um, that we're trying to answer. Uh, because we, I, we can't answer that. The, the best we can say is we, we believe so. We believe that the protection that's offered from the new vaccines will carry over to this new strain. And that's because the, uh, what the vaccine does is it targets proteins on the outside of the virus. And it seems like, although there's been some changes to some of the outside proteins, um, there's still a lot of similarities. So that indeed vaccines that were developed for the initial strain should still be very effective against this new strain. So you told me a little bit about it. Could you tell me how the vaccine works? Yeah, so, you know, the, this, uh, a lot of people are concerned. They've said, you know, uh, can we trust this new vaccine? It's been developed so quickly. It's got new technology. Um, in fact, the technology for developing these types of vaccines uh, has been ongoing now for several years, if not over a decade. And it's using what we call mRNA uh, technology. So before most vaccines, what we would do is we would take a virus. And for most of them, we would take that virus and we would grow it. And then we would cut it up and we would take a few of those pieces uh, of that virus, and we would put that into a vaccine, and that's what would go into your arm. Uh, and your body would recognize that as being foreign. That's proteins that, that aren't supposed to be in your body. And so they would produce antibodies against that. And that's how a regular vaccine would work. Problem with that is to make that vaccine, you have to grow a lot of virus. And then you've got to cut it up and you've got to pack. So, so there's a lot of work in producing a, on a mass scale, especially globally with COVID, a vaccine like that. So this new technology, what it does is it takes the little bit of the mRNA, which is the blueprint of what makes the virus, and we take a very small section of that that is kind of the blueprint for making the proteins, the spiky stuff on the outside of the virus, and that's what's injected into the body. And so that gets into our muscle cells, and then our muscle cells, that, that mRNA will then, our body will see this blueprint, and we will make these proteins, uh, for a short period of time, and then our body recognizes these proteins as being as foreign, and then starts to make antibodies against it. So then it would work the same way, but this way it allows our own body to quickly develop these proteins and then antibodies against it. People have concerns that the uh, technology will somehow in interfere with our own genes and change our own genetic blueprint, and that's that's not the case. There's different types of DNA and mRNA, and I don't want to get too technical, but this type of stuff uh, doesn't go into the cells, into the nucleus of, of our cells. It doesn't change our DNA. It doesn't, can't cause us to grow a, a third eye or a second head. Uh, it's 
all it does is a small piece of a, of a blueprint that gets into our body and allows our body to kind of build very quickly these proteins that we recognize as foreign and then shows our, our immune system what it has to attack if in the future it gets exposed. You know, if, if I can just, again, talk a bit about of an analogy for vaccines, because people are worried about vaccines, <clears throat> but this technology is, is very safe. And vaccines, we live in a world now where, uh, you know, we do not get exposed to hepatitis A and B, polio, mumps, rubella, uh, chickenpox. These were diseases that, um, you know, not long ago killed hundreds of thousands, millions uh, of, of, of people, of kids. Um, even measles um, um, every year would kill millions of children uh, before the vaccine. And now we, you know, we we forget we live in a world where we're so protected against these pathogens. Vaccines are designed and they're very safe. And the analogy I like to use is a vaccine just kind of shows us shows our body what to be on the lookout for. So imagine if you've never seen a hundred dollar bill, and you don't know what a hundred dollar bill is. You wouldn't know if you if you if someone gave it to you. You wouldn't know. What do I do with this? How much? How many groceries can I get at the co-op with this $100 bill? So what a vaccine does is, imagine we take that $100 bill and we, and we cut it up into a bunch of pieces. And then we show you just a few of the pieces, not the whole thing, just a few pieces. But you'd see what color the bill was. Maybe you'd see the face on it. So that later on, if you're walking down the road and you find a $100 bill on the ground, you pick it up. Right away, you'd know, I know what this is. I've seen this color before. I've seen this face before. This is a $100 bill. I know what I can do with this. But the few pieces of the $100 bill that we showed you, you can't do anything with that. You can't go to the co-op and buy anything with a few pieces of a bill. It can't work. The same thing with a vaccine. When we take a vaccine and we put a few pieces of the virus, or we put the blueprint of the virus and part of the blueprint of the virus into your body. It allows your body to recognize what the virus is, but it can't, it can't hurt you. It can't, you know, you can't get infected from that. It's just a few pieces of the blueprint of the virus. Which brands are we getting here in Canada and Nova Scotia? So, you know, my understanding is the government has certainly had made several agreements with several companies. There are hundreds of companies trying to develop vaccines. The good news is there are two companies, Pfizer vaccine and the Moderna uh, vaccine, which have been shown to be in the high 90s effective against reducing the risk of COVID. And people that get this vaccine, the chance of them getting COVID, um, if they were exposed, would be reduced to less than 1% is what I've heard. And, you know, if, even if people got infected after the vaccine by getting exposed to COVID, it would be a much milder infection. So very unlikely to have a severe infection. So there are those two vaccines. Um, now, some of the vaccines, the Pfizer vaccine has to be stored at a very cold temperature. The Moderna one, not nearly as, as strict with uh, the need for cold temperature. And there are other vaccines that are, are, are have different ranges. So more than likely, um, I'm not, I'm, I don't know yet, but more than likely we'll be getting the Moderna vaccine. Um, and uh, the logistics of will it be coming to Shetty Camp, who will be given by public health, the pharmacy, the clinic, uh, we do not know yet. The priority with uh, the vaccine uh, throughout the country is to get uh, doctors, nurses, healthcare workers, and um, very high-risk individuals uh, vaccinated first, so nursing home. And patients, you know, first starting with patients over the age of 75 and then over the age of 70 and 65 and, and then and going down, trying to spread it. And the goal is certainly to get the whole population vaccinated. Timeline, it's, it's difficult to know. The, the good news is at first we thought um, with these companies and supply issues that we may not start the vaccination until um, later the spring. But we already have started the vaccination in every province in, in Nova Scotia. We just started a few days ago and there are doctors and nurses getting vaccinated that are frontline workers uh, in COVID units and in nursing homes in the parts of the province where there's a higher risk of COVID. Uh, and so, and I've already been seeing emails uh, talking about getting other emergency room doctors. So like the doctors and nurses in Shetty Camp that staff the emergency department that might be at higher risk. So, um, you know, 
the, the, the plan to kind of get this vaccine out uh, is, is in play, uh, and, but the timeline is still not clear. But the good news is it certainly seems like it's happening faster than we originally thought. How many doses of, of the vaccine do we need? Yeah, so with, with the two vaccines that are currently approved uh, in Canada, the Pfizer and Moderna, uh, you would need uh, two doses, one dose and then another dose a few weeks later. Um, and you can't interchange. You can't get one and then get a dose of the other. You know, there's, stu- there's studies trying to figure out if that would work or not. But at the moment, you know, I mean, there are very limited studies. These vaccines are coming out. So we're trying to figure out uh, what's the best way to give them and timing wise. So at the moment, the recommendations are if you get one vaccine, that's the same vaccine you need to get for the second dose. Um, and, uh, it's, and it is important to get that second dose. The first dose is kind of, uh, kind of primes the body, and the second dose really helps the body's immune system uh, remember what they have to do. I mean, just like people, we you know we often do things better the second time. So people need that second booster dose to help their immune system really uh, be ready uh, for any potential exposure. Now there are other there are other vaccines as well uh, that are being developed. Um, there are other companies that are trying to produce vaccines. Some aren't effective and so won't continue, and others may be as or even more effective than the vaccines that we have now. The good news is the two vaccines that are approved are very effective. I mean, to have um, numbers that are showing 95% effectiveness and to reduce the risk of really any severe infection of COVID uh, down to less than 1%, I mean, those are, those are great numbers to have in a vaccine that was developed this quickly. So we talked a little bit about this. Um, what would you tell people who are nervous about getting the vaccine? Yeah, I mean, I, first of all, I understand why people would be nervous. Uh, this has been a scary time for everybody. Um, this is a, you know, it's, it's a virus that you can't see. It's out, you know, people are being told it's out there. You're going to be careful. Our life has certainly been changed. We can't go out and we can't, we can't socialize. Our holidays, our sports have all been changed. So, um, and people's, you know, life in, in many different ways has certainly been impacted. And so I understand people just being, uh, generally nervous and anxious about anything to do with COVID. Uh, you know, the message I like to spread is I, if it was here today, I would roll up my arm and get this vaccine. This is a vaccine that thanks to science uh, has been well developed and the vaccines that we have access to now seem to be very effective and it seemed to be very safe. Um, you know, these vaccines haven't been studied on 10 or 20 people. They've been studied on thousands and thousands and thousands of people already in, 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 in different trials. And the good news is that the, you know, there's already some talk about there's potentially side effects or adverse reactions. In fact, the studies have shown that these uh, vaccines uh, have no higher risk of adverse reactions than um, the placebos. And there really doesn't seem to be any higher risk of certain things than that we wouldn't generally expect in, in, in the regular population. Every vaccine has some side effects. You know, people get a vaccine and their arm will hurt a little bit. They may get a little bit of a fever. They may feel unwell for a little bit. That's a good thing. That means your body is reacting to what we've put inside you. In fact, that's a great thing. That means you're going to have effective, an effective dose of that vaccine. Um, this is a vaccine that, again, hopefully with my stories with the $100 bill or the, or the blueprint, this is something that can't change your DNA. It can't, it can't um, you know, it can't infect you. All it is, is it, it, you know, we're basically, the vaccine is showing your immune system a picture of this is what COVID-19 looks like, in particular, the spiky proteins on the outside. So if you see anything going around that comes in your body that looks like this, then go get some antibodies that have already been developed and attack it before it gets the body too sick. So it's, it's basically just a picture that we're putting inside the body. So I, for one, am very excited and very hopeful that 2021 will be a much different year and that thanks to science and, um, you know, some, I think, good decisions by the government and the healthcare system that we are rolling this out at a great, um, a great organized pace and that we can start getting a life back to normal. Anything you'd like to add? Um, I guess, you know, even with the vaccine and our hope is life gets back to normal, um, you know, after you get the vaccine, um, you know, we, we still need about 70% of the population to get the vaccine to develop what we call herd immunity, where enough people are immune to this virus that it just cannot spread. It can't go from one person to another to another. So, we, you know, that's why it's so important that, uh, that we get a, a good uptake of people taking this vaccine. But that's going to take a long time. We have to produce this vaccine. 
Although the good news is it's something that can be easily produced because it's not the old type of vaccine where you have to grow the virus. This technology allows us to produce the, the vaccine much more quickly. The problem now is logistically getting it out to the communities, getting it out to Shetikam, getting it out to Pleasant Bay and Meat Cove and, and up to the north and, uh, of Canada. So there are logistical issues, and that's why you know I believe the uh, you know the military is involved in, in some ways in trying to plan on how because it really is a mission uh, to, to get this done. So that's going to take some time. So in the meantime, we can't let our guard down. Um, this virus is still very much in our population in the population uh, throughout the country and could bounce back up in Nova Scotia. So masks, washing your hands, uh, making sure that over the holidays that you know you socially distance, that you make sure you have small bubbles, uh, that you still be very smart. Uh, and if you have any concern, if you have any symptoms, or if you think that you really have any exposure, to get tested. Uh, and that testing can be done very easily um, uh, here in Shetty Camp uh, or in Vaness. Uh, and we, so we need to, unfortunately, keep doing the wonderful measures that Nova Scotians um, have been doing that have really helped. Um, you know, I've often said that the doctors and nurses are the second line of defense against this pandemic. The first line are all the people up there. And they've been doing a great job in, in social and in distancing and hand washing and mask wearing. And that makes a great difference. That's what's really winning the battle here in Nova Scotia. You can write to us at chne television at gmail.com. We wish you a warm and safe holiday season and we'll see you in the new year. Thanks for watching.